today we are going to be learning about if statements. And what an if statement is, it's a decision. So just like we make decisions every day, in programming they make decisions as well. What to do. If this is true, then do this. If this is true, then do this. And those are called if statements. So I'm going to write today's date, September 13th. And we're going to be learning about decision structures using if statements. So just like I said, an if statement, we'll start using the keyword if. But before we can do that, we need to know what is the relational operator. So the relational operator checks the relation between two things. So we will be using the less than, the greater than, the less than or equal to, and then the greater than or equal to. And then this one here is the equal to, and this is not equal. So if you see that exclamation point, that means not equal. So we will be using these symbols to compare and figure out if something is equal to something else. So the first program that we're going to write is looking for the average test score, and it will congratulate the user if they achieved a high score. So how does this look? Well, first we're gonna just say we have some doubles, score one, score two, and score three. And let me change it because I'm just gonna get some basic dot util dot scanner. So I'm just getting some basic input from the user. Oh, and then I also need average. Then I'm going to say create a keyboard scanner. And so I'm going to say scanner keyboard equal new scanner system dot in. And then now I'm just going to get the input from the user. So I'm going to say now oh, system dot out dot uh, print line. This program will average three test scores. And then now I'm going to get the three test scores. So I'm going to say system.out.print line. Uh, let's do print. Why not? And then I'm going to say enter score or enter test. I'm just going to say not in. I'm going to say test one. And then now I'm going to say score one equals keyboard dot next double. And the reason why we're using next double is because we have a double data type up here. So I'm going to copy this same thing two more times for score two. Oh. This needs to be score two. This needs to be, there we go. And then three and three. And then now to get the average. And if you remember, averages are just adding everything up. So I'm going to say score one plus score two plus score three. And then to get the average, we divide by three. And then now I'm going to say system.out.print line. I'm going to say the average score plus average. And then there we go. So if we just run this as it is, so enter score one, I got a 90, a 95, and a 100. My average score is a 95. Perfect. But now, what if we want to display something if somebody got a high score of a 90 or a 95? So now I'm going to do the 
if the average is higher th higher than 95 congratulate the user so the way we do this is we write the word if if and then parentheses if the average is greater than or equal to 95 then we're going to say system dot out dot print you did a good job so I'm going to run this now test one let's say they got a hundred then they got an 85 and then they got a 43 their average was a 76 so they did not achieve higher than a 95 They did not achieve higher than a 95, so therefore, this message does not get displayed. But to only get this message displayed, we have to get higher than a 95. So I'm going to say 100, 100, and then they said, let's get, they got a 90. So their average was a 96. So they got higher than the 95, so they did a good job. So that's the if statement. Well, what if... I didn't get higher than a 95. What else would we write? Well, actually, we write else. And then we're going to say system dot out dot print line. You did not do a good job. Study harder. So now, this is saying if this is not true then this must be true so let's do a 90 a 23 and a 15 the average scores was a 42 says you did not do a good job study harder and that's true but now if we got higher than that 95 so let's say they got 100 100 and 100 their average score was 100 you did a good job so that is an else with an if statement if an else statement but typically, just for future reference, when we do these, we don't do them just like this. Um, if statements are very particular. So you, we use curly braces. And then I can say system.out.println. You did a good job. Because now, if I wanted something else to say in here, like system.out.println, fantastic, I can do that. Otherwise, if I only... If I don't have these curly braces, I can only write one thing, and then it understands that. So that is an if statement and an else statement. Um, we can also compare words to each other. And we can also do what is called a nested if statement. So that is an if statement within another if statement. And we can do that in the same way we did uh, this. An if statement is within another if statement. And we're going to do that. Statements that we're going to be learning are going to be using the J option pane. So we're just going to import Java X dot swing dot J option pane. So we can start using them, but you're going to see how we can use nested if statements and how to fix nested if statements. So we're going to ask the user for their test score. And so this here is going to be the numeric test score. And then also we're going to say string input, because remember, we have to have a place to hold the user's input. And so what we're doing is we're asking the user to enter in a number, and then we're going to display, is it A, B, C, D, or F? And then now we're going to say input the numeric test score. So I'm going to say input equals j option pane dot show input dialog enter your numeric test score and then now we're going to convert 
So I'm gonna say test score equals integer dot parse int. And then here in the middle, we're going to put where the input was stored and the input was stored in input. Makes life easy. So now we want to display the grade. So if the test score is less than 60, we're going to do and say j option pane dot show message dialog. And then we're going to say null comma quote your grade is an F. Then here we're going to say else. And then inside of this else we're going to say if. And then I'm going to copy the same information because it's basically the same. Don't know why I put it in there. And then instead of it being 60 we're going to say if it is less than 70. And then now I'm going to say else again. And then I'm going to copy and paste this. So else if score is less than 80, then we have a D, we have a C, and then you guessed it, else. And then we're going to paste this. Less than 90 is a B. And then lastly, we just say else. So if they got anything other than those, we're just going to, I'm just copying. And then we're just going to do that and then say you got an A. And then let me close this down. So let me run this and let's test it out. So we got an 85. Got a B. Perfect. Let's run it again. And let me say I got a 12. F. Fabulous. But now if you look at this, you can see it gets really long and it's hard to follow with all of these. We don't know where they're ending and where they're starting. So how do we fix that up? Well, to do that, we need to learn the else if statement, which literally means else if, but it makes it a lot more easier to understand. So the else if is very, very simple. So I'm just going to delete this, else if, and then we still have the condition right here. This is called a condition. And then that stays the same. And then now here, we're gonna say else, if, and then for me, I like things to be lined up a little bit. And then else, if, and then line that up, line this up. And then, then we're just gonna say else, and do that. So now, if you notice, we need to also make sure that these are matched with a closing, and they are, and we now have like two extras, or three extras. Yeah, we had three extra curly braces, and we don't need those. So now you can see how the code looks a lot neater. So if I run this, it's going to run the exact same if I did everything right. 89, 95, everything's working just fine. So that is the else if. So it just means else if. So if this is not true, then they're gonna test to see if this is true. And that if not true, then we're gonna test that one. Then this one, then this one. And that is the else if. And that is how we fix it. And remember when we are using, but now see here, if we have this, it's called a trailing else. And a trailing else simply means that it appears at the end of an if statement, but we also want it to catch to see if the user input anything wrongly. 
So let's just say else if test score is greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to 100, then your grade is an A. Else, I'm going to say, we're going to say J option pane dot show message dialog null. And then here in my message, all I'm writing is a message. I'm going to say invalid score. So that means if they entered in like more than 100. So if I entered in, say I got 150 on a test, invalid score. Because you can't get that. So that's why we would use that. Remember when we are using J option pane, we have system dot exit zero. And that's all. But for you guys, what I would suggest is that when we are doing these and we start using all these little curly braces, we put comments at it. So end our else statement for if clause or whatever you want to write, just so you know, so it doesn't get confused with these. Or you can say end of public static void main. And then we can say end of class, which the end of class is the end of the class up here. So these can help you so you don't delete them. And that is it.